a deserted city. One human being left after germ warfare. He must defend himself against a group of demented survivors. In a new motion picture called The Omega Man, Charlton Heston plays Robert Neville, the sole uninfected survivor desperately trying to save the human race. The director of the film is Boris Segal. As he and Heston begin filming Neville's struggle, the actor must seek to understand the predicament of the character he's playing. And he searches for an authority on the sources of man's behavior. Interesting kind of combination, I think. The man I'm talking to is Dr. Ashley Montague, the well-known anthropologist. I'd read some of his works and found much in them that seemed to me relevant to the characterization of Neville. When we heard that Dr. Montague was in Los Angeles, I invited him to visit the set. Of course, his uh, prime concern being his own survival and defense, I suppose the ultimate extension of uh, man as a killer ape. And this is where his culture had failed him. Here he was, a scientist and a military man and interested in maintaining his society when it was threatened by an appeal to the force. To depict how Neville deals with this threat, the company has to work in Los Angeles on Sundays and holidays to get the look of the city abandoned. Heston and the director prepare for a dangerous ride through streets cunningly booby-trapped by the others. Robert Neville's scientific background equips him to cope with his desperate circumstances. Heston expresses concern over his having no one to talk to. I think this uh, chess table is a, a demonstration of one of the parts of Neville's character that interested me the most, uh, and that is the fact of his solitary life being alone in the piece he plays chess with himself, or in fact, with a, with a bust of Julius Caesar, which comes to the same thing, and we're never quite certain of the degree to which he is aware that he is making the moves on both sides. It's a, a difficult condition. Did you move? To retain your sanity means to be involved in the others. In mankind, to be involved Indeed. in Indeed. Yeah. You know, this, uh, this rationalizes and, and answers a, a question that, that I thought about a little, because Neville could have fled the city, the, yes. where he finds himself uh, death waiting around every corner. Yes, really. he could have gone anywhere, but there was nowhere to go. In other words, you're, you're suggesting that it's better for him or for any creature to even be surrounded by enemies than yes. to be surrounded by nobody. But in Neville's nightmarish reality, his enemies who can only see in the dark are trying to destroy him. Outside his fortress, technicians prepare a crude catapult, which is no match for Neville's sophisticated weaponry. Like the others, Neville seeks only to defend himself by looking for their cure with his scientific know-how. Over in the uh, the laboratory section of uh, Neville's nest, we can uh, see how much of his life and how much of uh, of the civilization of which he was the end product was spent uh, in essentially the pursuit of 
of naked truth. What do they call that machine, for example? Well, that is a Coulter counter, which is capable of analyzing from 9 to 12 or even more different substances in the blood simultaneously and in a few minutes giving you the exact characteristics of each of those substances. But it can't detect the proportion of passion in the blood. Though. No, no, I'm afraid that this is a human trait. Neville at last is able to reach one other survivor, portrayed by Rosalind Cash, trying to save her with his own blood serum. And in this contact, he revives his human passion, his emotions, his sensuality. Action. Now, what you thinking? Well, you know the uh, old song? If you were the only girl in the world and I were the only boy, okay. But uh, till then, don't bother me. I guess I'm the only boy. Family. Forgot that. Keep the fuel up in the generator. I'll be into the garage. You stay here. What's this for? Comfort. The company shoots another part of Neville's struggle to carry on a normal day. He has been frustrated in communicating with the others because they only look to destroy what he stands for. I'm kind of playing it in these terms, that although Neville is physically healthy, is immune to this, this germ, that his life, his paranoid existence, has, has produced a kind of psychosis. Exactly. And this is, of course, the model and the pattern and the image of the condition of contemporary man that Neville really exhibits the psychosis that most people in the Western world are suffering from at the present time. They're all suffering from the psychology of the survivor. On Sunday, the company works on the Omega Man. And as he continues to play out his role, Charlton Heston is coming to learn about Robert Neville. He's a man trying to survive his own survival, his loneliness, his boredom, his inability to communicate with the other survivors who see or think they see the kind of man he is as evil. 